So me and my lady friend just now got back from Yamacon 2021. All right, just real quick, I want to give you guys an update on why I've, why I've been gone, where I've been, and why this video and a couple others might feel a little dated. Uh, if you don't care, uh, here's a timestamp. It's not clickable, but you can use it to to go past this boring part. But long story short, as I announced on my community tab at one point, uh, we actually went through what's called Hell Week where I live, which is our busiest week of the year. It's actually a bit more than a week, but the, the, the center core week is the absolute worst. Hearing that, near the tail end of Hell Week, I ended up getting sick with COVID and kind of just working through it. And after COVID, we started the groundwork on building new arcade machines for a new giant arcade. So that's why I haven't gone for a while. The hope is that after this, I'll be back as normal to two videos a week. And coming up soon, we are going to be going back to the Pack of the Day series. If you like YouTube shorts, you've watched a lot of YouTube on your phone uh, for the next 100 days. Well, it's actually more than 100 because it's, it's five of them a week and then two regular videos a week. But it's five shorts of a single Pokemon pack. Uh, which I've already started stocking up on. So the plan is for that to start in March. It'll be somewhere around the same time I started last year. It'll be around like March 10th, 20th is where it'll start. And the goal is to never miss one of those and never miss a regular upload. So again, if things feel a little dated, it's because this video and a few others were actually recorded like somewhere around here. And I'm just now getting the opportunity to edit them. Also, uh, I have my new like studio green screen and uh, I just kind of want to use it. Uh, the vendor hall is by far one of the most exciting things about Yamakon. You find all kinds of interesting things there. So in this video, I'm going to be going over basically everything that we purchased while, the, while we were there, opening things up that, you know, we haven't opened before, along with some things that we did open because, you know, excitement. But it was honestly a really fun time, and I can't wait to get into some of this with you. And yeah, there, there's the other pass. I'll explain these holes later in the video. So because this is primarily a Pokemon-themed channel, we're going to be starting off with this boy. I don't know the exact name of this set, because Japan has a lot more sets than us, and they essentially go into ours. Just a very quick correction here. Uh, these are not Japanese packs. I am very dumb. Uh, this pack and the other one that we do later are, in fact, Korean. Last the Yamakon, we picked up two Japanese packs. I figured I'd do the same thing here. And seeing as these were the only foreign packs, I just kind of assumed that they were Japanese, like 90% of the things at the con, and didn't realize that the front of the pack is very clearly in Korean. Uh, I also point out later, whenever I open it, that the sides of the cards are yellow and not white like in Japan, which probably should have tipped me off, but you know, I'm stupid. So they'll have like five sets, and then all five of those, they'll cut a couple cards from it, they might add a couple, but not usually, and then they release it here in the US as one set that's a lot larger than theirs. Uh, so I had to pick up a couple of these, so, you know, Pokemon theme channel, start off with the Pokemon. These have really large stems, I'm gonna just open this one from the bottom. If you guys know me, I like to preserve packs, I don't know how well you can really preserve the Japanese ones, but I can try. Yeah, that, that just straight up didn't work, I guess this wasn't being preserved. And I think, I think the pack trick is one to the front, I'm pretty sure it's one to the front. So we're gonna flip it, it is not one to the front. Well, we have a Tauros, <laughs> I guess there is no pack trick. We have a Crustle, a, uh, God, I'm not used to not having your names, a Shuppet, a God, Cast Form, there we go, and Roxanne, I do believe. Why did I get her name so quickly and I struggle on Cast Form and Shuppet? Like, I don't know, but, you know, it's kind of cool. We got a Hollow Tauros. I just need to know that, uh, the pack trick is not one to the front. I don't know why I thought it was. So also, you might notice the background is pretty blank as opposed to my regular videos. Uh, that's because we're going to be kind of building it as we go. And to start that off, uh, yeah, we have this really well-detailed uh, Piccolo figure. My lady friend is a giant fan of the Dragon Ball. Oh, and by the way, uh, like I said, this is primarily a Pokemon-themed channel. If you're interested in Pokemon, there is going to be a lot mixed in throughout the entire video. So I'm kind of grabbing these things at random, so I can't really give you a timestamp for the exact time for Pokemon stuff, but I guarantee you there's going to be other things in here you're interested in, uh, like maybe Piccolo here. So, of course, she did already open this thing, and he is slightly off-camera, but look at that. That thing is super highly detailed. I also think the best feature is that you can uh, uh, just pop that off, and we just have a little neck stub. 
Or you can just have a piccolo head to use as like a finger puppet. But yeah, we have the piccolo boy. The stand is a little weird. It'd be cooler if it was clear and not black. But aside from that, like, I like this. It's supposed to go with another one as well. Uh, I believe it's this entire set is how it's supposed to work. So like, there's, there's supposed to be a Goku that kind of goes with it. So again, grabbing completely randomly, uh, we do have my favorite bird. We have the Zapdos. I know it looks like this is like a custom made thing. It actually isn't. This is from Bandai. Um, Pokemon Focus. Now, I could be getting tricked, and this could be some Chinese ripoff crap, and they're using Bandai's logo very illegally, but I don't think so. Like, these are actually pretty well done. Like, this, like, felt-like material is super thick on his double-layered wings right here. I don't know why these aren't, like, attached, because Moltres doesn't have four wings. They're supposed to be attached, but it's still pretty cool. I mostly got it, and he has a little kind of bent beak here. Yeah, he's not really gonna do so well for a background, is he? Well, I guess that kind of works. The reason I got it is because my girlfriend got her favorite of the birds, that being the Articuno. I know this thing doesn't lift up like the black things on, on him do. And like the seams on this thing around like the wing are like, that has to be interesting to actually, you know, see it being made. But again, another interesting little, uh, little bird. I'm not that big of a plush person, so you're not going to see many plush in this. Actually, I think that might be the only plush that we bought. Okay, yeah, those do not make good for a background. All right, here we got something that hasn't been opened yet. We have, yeah, uh, I've done these at this con last year. Well, they weren't open last year because of COVID, but uh, back in, like, what is it, 2019? And uh, I actually got some decent things out of them. So I actually have a Pokemon in one of these grab bags as well, along with some of these other, like, you know, they could rip you off or you could get something good out of it, kind of bags and boxes. We have more to go through. I've actually opened one or two, not from this exact vendor, that ended up being pretty cool. So let's just start pulling out Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, if I can. Whatever it is, it is not coming out. There we go. Uh, yeah, that is... That is very Yu-Gi-Oh themed. Yep, this would only work with Yu-Gi-Oh. Very, very good inclusion. What else is in here? Uh, oh, okay. I expected like loose cards or something, but no, there, there are two packs in here. Uh, Dawn of Majesty and Legendary Dolus Synchro Storm. They're both first edition, which is pretty nice. And they are also both from 2020, so they're not super old. Uh, again, I don't know pack tricks. We're just gonna tear these open and go through them. Uh, so let's see here. We have Bird Lady, uh, a thing, a hedgehog, another dragon thing, and we have a rare high speed droid kite drake. Interesting. Yeah, I have a feeling if they're throwing packs in these, they're probably weighed. Uh, I think in order to uh, offset, you know, cost, they probably weigh some of these. But they might actually throw some of the heavier ones in it to, you know, drive home. You know, some people are like, hey, I bought this and I actually got something good out of it. Maybe I want to go buy another or somebody else will, if you get what I mean. Uh, so we have Tailwind of Gusto. Uh, yes, a shipyard. A very uh, interesting fortress. Hey, uh, Magic Key Mech Musket Beto's Buster. I mean, it looks cool. I still hit the way that Yu-Gi-Oh names things, but I haven't opened Yu-Gi-Oh cards in a while, and this makes me happy. That's a nice little card. Uh, we have a glowing peacock. Well, I guess it's more of an albino. We have an albino bioluminescent peacock. Uh, a bee, a thing, and a thing. Maybe we can throw that in our amazingly included hard case, which, even if this card was sleeved, would leave probably too much room for the card and will probably beat the hell out of it. All right, so let's start getting to why these are hole punched. This was my pass. You can see I have four hole punches down here and this is my lady friends. She has two. There were actually some interesting things. So these are for the voice actors that appeared that were doing panels and they were also doing signatures. I'm not that big of a signature person. I, you know, I went last time, I saw the long lines and like, it's not worth it to me. But this year, there were four voice actors from Fire Emblem Three Houses. I am a huge Fire Emblem fan, and so I considered bringing the art book, but I didn't want to lug that thing around. So I brought the Steel Collector's case, and we have four voice actors' signatures. Now, this first one up here, right here, uh, these two lines are the same voice actor. He voiced the uh, Edelgard's dad, the old emperor. Uh, this one right here... 
He forgot he even voiced in the game because he does the additional voices. He probably just grunted a lot in front of a microphone. Uh, we have Sedith's voice actor right here, and we have Annette's. Her line was stupid long. Uh, we ended up going away for like an hour and coming back to hop in line, and I was still in line for at least close to an hour. It was kind of ridiculous, but Annette is one of my favorite characters, so that makes me happy. Again, I'm not that big on signatures. It's not a huge thing of mine. But this is just, this makes me so happy. Yeah, you're going back here. I know you're not open. Your purpose here, like, I didn't buy this at the con, but you're part of the background now. Oh, and actually, I should probably, like, you know, finagle this somehow. All right, you know what? It's not perfect, but Piccolo is holding our, our Yamacon badge. It's really, like, hitting the light there. That's a bit better. All right, so next up, another thing I didn't open, but I just thought it was really cool. It's only $3, so I'm guessing I know exactly what this is, but... We have an original PlayStation 1 design little book here. Uh, they had another PlayStation thing. They only had two of these. The other one's actually different. It was just like a PlayStation logo over and over. And like, no, this is so much cooler. You have like a sketch of the PS1. This just looks cool to me. The fact that it was only $3, I can almost guarantee this is just going to be a generic blank book. Like just an empty notebook that I have no intent of actually using, but I don't know exactly what it is So I figured I'd buy it and figure out and yes, that is exactly what it is But it's still cool. It makes me happy. I, I, I collect things So I'm happy to have more useless crap to take up space in my house speaking of useless crap We have Pokemon bulk. Uh, I don't know how well the sticker is going to come off But part of the reason I bought this was just so I had the tin yeah, it comes off pretty good. It was not really a sticker, just cardboard tape. Yeah, it's not too bad. I can get that adhesive off of there. But, you know, it's one of the, I think, Hidden Fates? No, this is Shining Fates tins with Kyogre. But it is just bulk cards. I have not gone through this yet. You'd think that they would be sealed, but they're not. You figure they put tape on the sides or something. But I haven't gone through this. I, I saw one reverse in there, but that was it. So there could be something worthwhile in here. I'm just kind of having my doubts. We're gonna fly through it very quickly. You have a Trap Pinch, Sneasel, Energy, my favorite. We have an Empoleon, that's a neat looking card, even though it's not really a favorite of mine by any means. Tag Team of Guzma and Hala, even if it's not like a crazy tag team, I like having tag teams. Uh, Tropius, Mimikyu, Vaporeon, nice artwork. We have a Tag Call of the Golden Rayer of you. Delhamese, I don't know how to say your name. Cosmog, Ponytail with nice artwork. Crab Brawler, Carvana, Chin Chow, Sneasel, Safil, Aelin Meowth, Ralts, Passament, at my boy, my boy. Uh, Lileap, Rotom, Skrelp. Uh, another really nice artwork with that Pikachu there. We have Teddy Ursa, Nosepass, Litleo. We have our first reverse. We have a Rapidash. I'm not expecting any hollows in here. It was listed as bulk, but I figured I'd try my odds for only $5. Uh, we have Entei, another energy. Uh, yep. Oh, upside down cards, my favorite. We have a Sylveon, a Tangrowth, Lily's Full Force. I actually have the Japanese uh, hyper rare version of this. Uh, part of the reason I actually bought Japanese Paxol is there. I only bought two. I opened one that one earlier. Is because I the last convention we went to uh, two years ago, we also bought two Japanese packs, and I pulled the hyper rare version of this in Japanese. And I was like, okay, I have to try my luck again, just buy two, and see if I can do it again. Uh, so we have Skrilp, another Pikachu as a double. We have a Stuffle, a uh, Ponyard, Litleo. We have a Reverse Lillipup. That's the one card that was spoiled for me. We have an Energy, Erica, the beautiful Jolteon, Inns Resolve, Teddy Ursa. Nosepass, Litleo, Flabebe, Safil, we have her -der 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 -der, the dog. Uh, Kyogre, very, very fitting. I like to imagine that was done intentionally. Uh, we have an Energy, Cosmoium, Mawile, Dusclops, and Oddish. So no, nothing crazy. Was it worth $5? Probably not. But it's one of those things, you know, like, uh, I'm at a con wasting a bunch of money. Like, might as well just have fun with it and get something that, you know, the odds are obviously stacked against me. In a normal circumstance, probably wouldn't do it. But it's just fun, and at least I have another one of these mini tins that I really don't have many of. Also, sorry if anybody thought their email was, like, you know, they were receiving an email, my phone went off, and it might have picked up on camera. Rather quietly. So next up, I have already opened this, and I gotta say, 
These are really cool. So I went back and got some more that are not opened. These are another mystery blind bag, well, a box in this case, $5. And the ones that me and Anna bought, I was very happy with for only $5. So we bought some more. So again, I already know what's in here. And you know, some of the things are kind of like, whatever, we have an Ultra Beast sticker. Like, I don't, I don't really have a use for that. Uh, but I, I do have a Pokemon collection of stickers, so I can just throw that in there. Um, we also have a Pikachu keychain. They were actually selling these, yeah, for $6 in their shop. So if you're considering the value of what you could have bought for their prices, this is already over it by itself. But it's another Pikachu keychain. I'm not that big of a keychain person, but I do have like a chain of keychains on my wall that this will probably be getting added onto. It's not that long, it's literally like right there. Uh, so these are actually from the Action Flips. Whenever you buy the Pokemon Action, Action Flips packs, you will get one random sticker with them. It's a really old thing, and I was very, very surprised to see that this thing was in here. Yeah, like 1998, I think it says on there. They didn't do these for that long, and I love the Action Flips. I have a huge collection. Well, probably not as big as some people, but I'm proud of my collection. We have another sticker for it. But the last thing in this box, I had never heard of before. Now you can see that they have a price, so they're selling it in the store, but they didn't actually have any available. That means the only way to get these, if you wanted more, is to go back to the vendor and buy more of these mystery boxes. So we did. So it is in Japanese. Uh, yeah, that is Korean. Again, you absolute moron. And you can see it is a more modern thing. Like we have, you know, uh, at least up to Sun and Moon in here. And one of these had something pretty crazy in it. But you're probably wondering exactly what these are. Okay, actually, this was, uh, so yeah, this was one of Anna's boxes. Now that I'm, uh, now that I see these, I remember. On one side, we have Cosmog. Now, these are actually like a 3D, like they pop out for the Pokemon. They're very, like, well-rounded, if you get what I mean. Like, it's pretty well done. And on the back end, we have its evolution. I don't think it's supposed to happen. We just got really lucky. These are magnets. Now, they're supposed to be used for some sort of game from what I can make out from the little instruction thing in here and from the box. How the game works, what it is, I couldn't tell you. It's in Japanese. But I love these things. I want to learn more about them, and I want to get more of them. It's just another Pokemon thing for me to collect and another way for that company to take all of my money. So on a side note, if you know what these are, if you have a collection of these, if you've seen them before, if you know any information about them, because all I know is what I can gather from opening them, then please let me know. Hell, if you know Japanese, let me know what that says. I can use my phone, I suppose, for Google Lens, but it won't work that well. I would just like to know how I can find more of these. I think that these are really cool. But for five bucks, I gotta say, like, you know, it's not a bad little deal. I thought it was pretty neat, so we have more to go through. So next up, we're doing something a little odd. It's a show that I'm not into, but a lot of you guys might be. Now, the reason why I said that Abby, the voice actor for Annette, had a very long line was actually because of this show. She voiced uh, Nanako, uh, the demon girl with a thing in her mouth. Uh, so most of her voices were... <clears throat> But, you know, uh, very popular show, caused a very long line. I watched this show. I didn't watch all of it. I think I watched most of season one. Uh, I apologize for any Demon Slayer fans out there. I couldn't get that into it. But if you're watching a video about a convention, I figured you would probably be a fan. So I wanted to get, I wanted to go ahead and throw this in here. Plus, I'm a huge fan of cards. I like collecting card games I've never heard of. I didn't know that Demon Slayer had a card game. So I wanted to, you know, I like checking these kind of things out. And I do not know that character. If she appeared in season one, then I apologize for not remembering her. But that is cool. It is a transparent card. If I was a bigger fan of the series, like, you know, I liked the show, then, you know, that would be something I'd really enjoy. Even as a non-fan, I really do like that. And we have another character who I recognize, but I couldn't begin to tell you his name. Like I said, I watched most of the first season. I watched it over like two days, and I was like, this show isn't for me. I just, I uh, I don't want to get into it. But again, really cool. These aren't bad. That's all that came in there, aside from this little backer thing. But it's kind of neat. Like, I can see these doing pretty well with people. All right, let's go ahead and get the other one of these out of the way. This is the other one that I had opened. I believe, yes, this one was the one that I purchased. Uh, we'll just pull everything out. So again, we had another Ultra Beast sticker. Uh, Blaze Fion. Uh, 
we also had another one of these. And as I, as I confirmed by another one that Anna bought today on the second day of the convention, uh, they don't all come with this. But we have another one of the art box stickers. And on top of that, we have a pin. I do believe this is a badge. I'm pretty sure that this is a badge from one of the games. Which one? I'm sorry to say I can't tell you. But we got another one of these. So again, I only had four items. But this is the one that I was like, this could be interesting. So in here are two magnets. We have Necrozoma. Probably not the worst one to have. Or, Necro or Necrozma, I'm sorry. I, I tend to say names wrong. Level 90. Um, but again, another like pop-out magnet. But the other one was a Charizard. For the Pokemon fans out there, I'm sure you know, anything that the Pokemon company produces, if there's a Charizard involved, it's the most wanted thing and it's probably going to have the highest value. So if these things have resell value, I might have just hit the gold mine with pulling this little magnet. Uh, the only thing is, is like, you know, whenever we buy these, actually, no, they were sealed, weren't they? No, they weren't. Yeah, so there's no way to actually seal these things. So it's very possible if these things did hold value, the people at the vendor could have gone and, you know, pulled out all of the good ones. But the fact that the Charizard's in there, I kind of doubt it. But again, I just want to learn more about these things. I freaking love them. Speaking of Pokemon, there were two things I picked up at the convention that I opted to not put in the thumbnail because I didn't want to clickbait. But we did pick up a Fusion Strike Elite Trainer box. Uh, I'm really excited to do this one. But we also have a Celebrations Elite Trainer box. The vendor we bought these from are selling this for 40 and this for 60 I don't know what the retail value of this is, but this is either retail or close to it if it's like the previous Elite Trainer boxes. I was stoked to find this. Like, I can't even begin to explain how much I wanted more celebrations. And there, every other vendor that was there that had this box, I think there were two other vendors, we were selling it for 90 It was only 60 I picked this thing up immediately. Um, and in the same vendor, they had this, where other ones were selling it for 60 they were selling it for 40 It's a little dented in the sides. But my next two videos, if things go according to plan, will be the both of these. I'll probably do Fusion Strike in the next video, and then this one after. My videos are every Wednesday and Sunday, so I'll look forward to this in the next, and this one after that. I'm really excited to do these things. If you're wondering why I'm not doing them in this video, A, money. You have to understand that every video on this channel costs me something. And B, they're Elite Trainer Boxes. Like, I want them to be their own video. I like Elite Trainer Boxes too much. So some of you might be wondering, if I had four hole punches in mine, where did my lady friend's hole punches come from? Well, she got two other signatures. Oh, actually, she got uh, some of her, like, manga signed as well. But two of the coolest things I want to show off here. She has a print from Paul St. Peter, who voiced Karama from Naruto. So we have a signature here and just a little thank you note. It's pretty cool. Um, of course, these prints are pretty expensive because you have to buy them from the voice actor when you go up to the panel. Uh, but it's pretty neat. Uh, I think even cooler, something I like far more, we have Mr. Roshi. And he also included a uh, <laughs> Kamehameha baby comment up there at the top. I love this thing. I think this is like arguably one of the coolest things from the convention. Again, I'm not that big on signatures, but this one visit is kind of getting me there, man. This is just cool to me. Also, those will be getting framed in case you're wondering. I'm not just gonna leave them out loose. Uh, also, the manga she had signed, one was uh, Code Geass and one was Fullmetal Alchemist. She actually had two signatures. I don't remember who the other one was, but I know one of them was the voice actor for Havoc. Next up, we have something that I just I just had to have. We have a Nuka-Cola lunch bag. I have no use for it. I actually do use a uh, lunch bag for work. Uh, this is a bit smaller than what I use, even though it might look kind of large on camera. Um, but uh, it is an officially licensed thing from Bethesda. And I am obviously huge on the Fallout franchise. And one thing that I'm wanting to do is do like a Fallout theme for my kitchen when I eventually get a house. We actually have quite a few Fallout things in our kitchen already. But just to have this, you know, like Nuka-Cola bag, like above the fridge or a counter or something. Like, I just, 
I don't know. It was like fifteen dollars, I think, and I just I really wanted to have it. It's cool. Well, I guess it can be cool or warm, depending on what you're storing in it. So let's get to this. I told you I had a Pokemon version of this from that same vendor. I have more Pokemon things coming up, like I said. But the Yu-Gi-Oh one was slightly disappointing. It was cool that it had two packs in it. But what was with the random clear thing and the fact that those packs can probably be weighed very easily? Hopefully you have something better in here. And Fusion Strike. Hell yeah, I've hardly opened any of these yet. This makes me happy. It's still in the cardboard thing, which I believe makes them harder to weigh. That's cool. We also have, wow, not much in here. Uh, we have a deck box, a Gengar deck box as well. Um, I'm not a big deck box person, as I don't actually play the TCG, I just collect. Um, so I don't really have a big use for it. I, I, I guess I can technically add to the collection, even though I don't really collect Ultra Pro deck boxes. But, decent inclusion. I do think for $10, though, I mean, nah, I wouldn't do it again. There, we can throw that deck box back there for now. Let's go and open up this Fusion Strike pack. That is a nice inclusion. Like I said, I've hardly done any Fusion Strike. Um, I mentioned in a previous video, actually my Christmas video, where I opened my first Fusion Strike pack, um, that I have had no spoilers for this set. That is still true. The uh, two packs that I opened in the Christmas video were the only two things I've had for spoilers. I still have not looked anything up on the set because I like going into these sets mostly blind. I think before I do the Elite Trainer box, I might do some research since I've, you know, now done some things blind, but we'll see. So we have the code card. There you go. We do one, two, three to the front. Get rid of the energy. Also, can I say it's odd that the Pokemon company doesn't do uh, code cards in Japan? I just realized that whenever I opened that last pack. Uh, I guess the card game isn't a big thing there digitally. But we have the Mandy Buzz. Nine Tails, beautiful artwork on that one, and the Farewell Bell as all of our uncommons. Going on with our commons, we have the Durant Panseer Minin. That is amazing. I like that. Very just smooth artwork on there. We have the Balt Toy Galarian Cursula, a reverse Farewell Bell. I mean, sure. But on the end, something good, something good. I mean, I'm not going to complain. It's not going to be worth anything. I can throw the value down there, but it's not a hollow or anything, so I doubt it's going to have much value. But Latias, I mean, that is not a bad-looking card, and I love getting legendaries, so especially getting one as a rare, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah, uh, another thing I'll just quickly throw in here. I picked up a Yu-Gi-Oh! Structure deck. Uh, I don't remember how much it was. Uh, I like the artwork of it. I think it might be an okay deck. If you guys don't know, whenever I do a video on a deck, I always do two in one video because I think one just isn't quite enough. Uh, and I actually had one deck planned for a future video, but I didn't have a second one to go with it. So now we have this for a future video. God damn it. Look, all you had to do was stay there because I want to have, you know, the Yamacon thing. Actually, I think that kind of works better. So, the same store that we got those little boxes from, the $5 Pokemon boxes. They also had $25 boxes. Now, I do have another one of these to do, but this one was opened. This was video game characters grab box. I was satisfied with this, just like it was with the small Pokemon ones, so I did go back. I honestly think these vendors did things very fairly compared to other ones that would, you know, try to skim you out of them, kind of like that Pokemon and the Yu-Gi-Oh bo bags that we got. I mean, $10 wasn't too bad, but these just feel so much more worth it to me. So I have not opened this, but they were selling these things individually. Um, I didn't think about picking any more up, so this is the only one that you'll see. But I didn't want to spoil it, so we got this thing in here. And yeah, I know it's odd that you know we didn't get a Pokemon box, we still got a Pokemon thing, but I'm happy about it. And inside, I swear I've done these before. I think I have. Yeah, I have done these. I swear I've done these. It's probably yeah, it's not the exact same line. Very short line, I'll say. You only have the original starters with Pikachu, Eevee, and Mew. And, I mean, I had to get the second to best one. We all know that Bulbasaur is the best. Everybody can agree. I know. You all agree with me. It's a perfectly shareable opinion. But Mew, I mean, that's that's nice. To be, to be fair, this is probably, like, the most sought-after one from this. And it's also, like, one of my girlfriend's favorite Pokemon, if not her all-time favorite. 
I, yeah, I, I it had to get a different line of these that I did, because I know I have some of these Pokeballs or these black things come off. One of them I actually have where the black thing is broken. I think I opened them on a very old video of mine, and this channel was still young, and I was recording with a really bad setup. But we have a suction cup mew. Our next item from this, and remember, I already know what's in this one. Uh, we have a, another keychain. Again, not that big on keychains, but it's from Overwatch. I used to play way, way too much Overwatch. And it is a Tracer keychain. I would open it, but I have too much of a mess already. Um, but, you know, it's a cool inclusion. I, I still like Overwatch. I don't play it as much as I used to. I'm way back into Halo again, now that Infinite's a thing. But, yeah, that's cool. We also have, yes, uh, a Zelda keychain. Uh, with these kind of keychains, I actually do like them. I usually just cut that little nub off and just kind of have the character, like, you know, put it on a shelf with all my other shelf display things. But yeah, we have a keychain from Zelda, and we have a keychain from Zelda. I am not the biggest Zelda person. Don't get me wrong, I like Zelda, I like the thematics behind it, I really do like everything about the games, but I'm just not as big into them as some people, especially my brother. So these will probably be going to him. If I, if it wasn't for my brother, I would probably keep them. Like I don't, It's not like I would throw them away. I just know that he'll get more out of them than I will. We also have... A duplicate of this thing. Yeah, they throw them in the large boxes too, but another Pokemon thing in the video game box. Um, my favorite thing in this whole thing, we got some Angry Birds pins. <laughs> I, I'm so happy about those. Uh, here we have a meme. Yeah, it's like a Japanese Among Us product. It, it's just like a pen, a, a notebook, and a thing to keep it on with like little shapes. I, I, this is obviously like a, a set for kids going to school. I mean, I have zero interest in it. I don't really know who I could even give it to. But the last thing is another thing that they were actually selling there. It's just a little sticker sheet. They're kind of like bubble stickers, like they're kind of thick. Um, but I wasn't really gonna buy them, you know, in the store, but it's kind of nice to have, I suppose, especially because we got a Noivern on there. That's one of my little boys. I just wish there was an Absol. I also have like every version of Frufrau on here with some berries and Pokédex. We got Mewtwo. Uh, like the X and Y version, Blaziken. It's kind of cool. They're really tiny little stickers, and it's cool. They're like bubbly, you know, they kind of pop out, but eh, it'll just, it'll be a collection thing for me, especially because, you know, like it's a thing not in the U.S., so it's a bit more of a unique thing to put in the collection. So yeah, the gaming box wasn't insane, but I gotta say for $25, there were some interesting inclusions at least. Uh, the next thing is actually in this large bag. So last time that we went, we bought some Japanese foods. And some of them were actually really good, some were weird. I just like trying things from other countries. Uh, sadly, we didn't think to buy any on day one, and on day two, their, their options were smaller, but we still got a decent amount. Um, so most of, actually all of these we have not tried. So uh, I'm going to be throwing like, maybe maybe I'll record a clip or I'll just put it on as text, I'm not sure. It was like what I thought about them after I've tried them because I have some time before this video goes up. Um, but yeah, these are just like chewy candy. I'm like Haichu is a huge one that came from them along with like Mumbo, I think. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Yeah, they were originally Japanese candy that have actually started getting a thing here in the US. And this is one I hadn't heard of. And they're both, you know, they're just like the other ones that are like fruit flavored. So I figured it could be worth trying because I really do like Haichu. Okay, so these are actually better than I expected. They're kind of on the line of Haichu. Uh, I think I like Haichu more still, but these are real close. The little gummies on the inside, like tiny little balls of gummies. And there's like a bunch of them in there. If you're one of those people that has like fears of those holes that are clustered together, it's a really weird phobia. Uh, you'll probably absolutely hate these, but I love them. Uh, we had a kind of odd one. I just, you know, the more bready things are kind of odd to me, and I tend, to, I tended to like the ones that we got. So this is like a cheesecake. It looks okay. I figured I'd give it a try. It's mostly in English. Okay, yeah, this is basically just angel food cake. If you've had that, that is exactly what this is. I don't get why it's called cheesecake. There's nothing, it didn't taste like cheese. There wasn't cheese on it. There wasn't cheese in it. It wasn't bad. It was really good. Super freaking soft. But I don't know where the cheese part came from. Uh, my girlfriend also got this. It's gummy candy. It's kiwi specifically. They had other flavors, but kiwi. Yeah, uh, even though this video was like kind of done a little while back, I still we still have like a giant bag of these because they're really not that great. They're basically, if you've had Lifesavers gummies, they're the same thing, but it's only one flavor. It's a very dull flavor. It's just... 
not that good. So I was assuming when I saw this that this is chocolate covered nuts, but now I'm not so serious. Like it's like a little leaf back there. I don't know exactly what this is. Um, called, yeah, King of Nuts is, uh, is the most valuable in the world. So it's called King of Nuts. Interesting. Yeah, I just thought this would be an interesting thing to try. Well, how many of you have already either disliked the video or called me stupid? Uh, those clearly do say macadamia. I I'm just really, really dumb and a little dyslexic. And the second I saw that word, I just kind of assumed it was some made up term for a type of candy food thing. Uh, yeah, they, they were good. I'm not a big fan of nuts and chocolate, but it was it, 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 kind of surprising that I liked them as much as I did. This, I didn't like them a whole lot. I'm not sure if I would ever buy them again, given the opportunity, but they weren't bad. And lastly, we got some of these things. Uh, I had one of these last year, and I freaking loved it. So I bought another. My lady friend also bought the other kind. Um, but I loved it last year. I don't even remember exactly what it tasted like. It's been so long. But, uh, yeah, we had to do a few of these. And, yeah, as always, I, I, I love the Fishy Boys last year. I'll love them again this year. If you've had those, like, wafer crackers, I'll put a photo here. Uh, it's basically just those, but a bit bigger and in the shape of a fish. Yeah, like I said, by the time we got there today, their variety was pretty bad. So the next one is another card pack. This one, again, being from Bandai, this is actually Genshin Impact. Uh, I only bought one of these because they were, like, 7 or $8. Um... But I actually like Genshin Impact. I played it on PC for about a week. I got really into it. But it's one of those games that feels at home on the Switch. And the Switch version still isn't out. And I'm kind of just refusing to play it until the Switch version comes out. Because like I feel like that is where the game will shine. That's where I'm going to want to play it the most. So I'm very unlikely to know the characters that we're opening. Unless we get like one of the basic ones. But even then, it's been quite a while for me. But we're going to open these things up. I, I I figured, you know, some of you guys might be in the Genshin Impact. I definitely was for a little while. Okay, so these are kind of like the clear ones. They're not technically clear. So you have uh, Shinnen, I believe her name is pronounced. Um, but pretty similar to the Demon Slayer ones. But the back actually has like a matte, uh, you know, type of paint. Oh, a bit of a holograph, especially on that line there. Really smooth card. Um... Just of the character in like a different... Okay, it's the same pose, it seems. It's just like mirrored and more zoomed out. And again, there are only two cards. We also have Kanu. I do not recognize her either. Kanu? Kanu? I'm not too sure. Uh, but again, like not, not terrible looking cards. I just... I really want to wait for the game to release. And like maybe if I had been playing the game more, I would have wanted to get more of these. Because um, I really did enjoy my time on it on PC. I just... I'm waiting for the Switch version. That is where the game is going to absolutely shine. All right, we're starting to make really good progress. I don't think there's a whole lot left. So we're gonna open up one of these. We have two of these Pokemon grab boxes of which I have not opened. And we are going to dig into them. Um, again, I have no idea what could be inside of these. So first off, we have a Charmander pin. That's pretty cool. Was this one of the unopened ones? Yeah, this was one of the unopened ones. My bad. Sorry. I was getting confused. Um, focus. I mean, they were selling it for a whole $2. Nothing crazy, but it is a Pokemon pin. I think the cooler ones, like the ones they use for the TCG, were actually like a cutout of the Pokemon. But not bad. Little Charmander. Uh, oh! Well, look at what we have here. So, sadly, we didn't get any more of the magnets, but this thing is just kind of embedded in a, whatever plastic it was supposed to originally be in. We have a little Pichu. That is really cool. Focus on it here. This looks like a Funko, uh, you know, figure. It is. It is Funko. That's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. We have a little, little Pichu. That's definitely going back here somewhere. But that was all that was in that one. That was a pretty short one, but for only $5, like, that's not bad. Next up, for all the Pokemon people out there once again, I found this. Wizard's Guide to Pokemon. This is a magazine being sold at a magazine place. It was $10, and it's, you know, Wizard is Special Edition. Now, I wasn't able to open it, but I'm assuming this is from the TCG because Wizards of the Coast used to manufacture Pokemon, and I'm hoping that this is a thing from Wizards of the Coast. So we're going to open this thing up. Like, I really hope that this has to do with the card game. I'm hoping it's not just like, you know... A generic thing about like Pokemon or whatever. So inside 
we have this boy, and let's flip it open. Oh, we got an advertisement for something Star Wars. Uh, phenomenal. Oh, so this is about the comics, it seems. Let's see. Does that have a... Yeah, Wizard Entertainment Group down there. Pokemon 101, a beginner's guide to the Pokemon world. How... How old is this? I really want to know. Look, we have you know, a bunch of like Gen 1 things here. It looks like pictures from the original show. So it's Gen 1 Pokemon all across every page. So we have a thing about products. Yeah, Game Boy Advanced. I know you can't see anything right now. Uh, in the middle of my hype, my camera shut off due to overheating. I freaking love it. Didn't even warn me this time. Usually it warns me. Okay, went and ate pizza because you got to eat unhealthy whenever you go to conventions. And uh, we're back. So I did go ahead and finish flipping through this because the hype was too real. Um, but long story short, it just has like a bunch of like merchandise things in here. Like things from the era. Like you like the original like Pokeball toys with the Pokemon in them. The Game Boy, which is what got me really excited. Like, was this before Yellow even released? Because we just have Blastoise and Charmander up there. Um, things about, like, the books, which actually featured Red instead of Ash, if I remember correctly. Uh, this is about the show, like, a bunch of different episodes. Um, we have just, like, interactive things here with, like... Look at that artwork of Ash. Like, I just love this, man. You just have, like, a maze to do... Um, so there's this thing. It's like how to draw them, but clearly it's how to draw them poorly. Um, but then just this. There's an es there's an explanation on another page as to what this is. Uh, but why? Um, didn't we have like a thing on like finding Pokemon? Uh, just stuff like that. Little interactive things. It's cool. I am super happy about this. This makes me happy. It is going back in the bag and board. Also, I did confirm the date of this thing's publication was back in 1999. So it isn't some modern thing where they went back and like, oh, look at this old Pokemon stuff. No, this is new. Like, old. It's not new. My girlfriend is also being, is getting interested in doing Gunpla. If you don't know what that is, it's literally just building Gundams. You buy a kit like this. Think of it like a more advanced Legos, although I guess Legos can get kind of crazy. Um, and the idea is that it can, depending on what set you buy, it can take a very long time to build them. So this one is simply this little chibi almost looking guy. Um, and when it's done, it'll look like this. Now, of course, it's not done. Like I said, we just got back from the convention. Right now, it is just in a bunch of bags. Oh, I thought this was just an instruction book. I don't think she's even seen this yet. There's a comic in here. It's a Japanese, like, comic page with instructions. That is cool. But yeah, this is kind of like the end result right here. Um, so, she said that she is going to try her best to actually build this before I get done editing this video and before it goes live. So I can throw an image or maybe even a video up right here for, uh, right after I get done talking, for what this thing is like when it's completed if she gets it done in time. But she actually has a second one. Uh, this one's a lot less chibi looking. It's a lot more kind of cool in my opinion. We have the full armor unicorn Gundam. I actually do like the other one more, but this one is just way too cool. Um, and again, this right here is what it will look like when it's done as soon as it focuses on it. And these are a little bit older, actually. The other one was from uh, 2017. This one's actually 2015, so these are older sets. Um, but again, they come in these things that you have to, like, snap off to get all of the parts. And this one is going to be real complicated. He's a really bulky boy. But here's a better shot of the final image if she doesn't get it built in time, because this one looks like it's going to be a bit in, like, you have all these, un like, under plates and stuff like that. Uh, a good friend of mine, as well as a Twitch streamer, uh, Perk Hayes, uh, he actually builds Gunplus. This is a thing that he does. So maybe he would be interested in this. Maybe he could tell you more? I want to explain Gunplus to someone who has never, or has nearly no idea what it is. Uh, so Gunpla are basically uh, Gundam model kits that are made of plastic. And they are molded in color so that you don't have to paint them. So all you need is a couple tools like clippers and some, like, sandpaper. Uh, and yeah, you can put them together yourself. It's kind of like adult Legos. They're very hard to read sometimes, uh, but very rewarding. And they come in different tiers, like Master Grade, Beginner Grade, or not Beginner Grade, uh, yeah, it's fun stuff. And, um, 
You can panel line them too if you want. Some people do paint them though, but uh, I'm not good enough for that, so. Oh, this thing opens huge. Good God. Yeah, see, I do not have the patience for this. Oh, uh, no comic thing on this one. But again, if she gets this one done in time, I will be throwing it on the video right here. Oh, another pretty cool thing I'm gonna be doing after I'm done doing this. Um, Ark Exodus. It is a film by uh, Johnny Young Bosch. He was actually the additional voices for Fire Emblem Three Houses, the guy we got a signature for. This is a film that I guess he actually wrote and stars in. Uh, it actually is premiering, uh, depending on what time it is uh, right now, it's premiering tonight exclusively at Yamakon, from what I understand. Uh, it was too late, and I we had been we had spent so long there the last two days we didn't want to stay for it. Um, but this card, I'm going to have to blur part of this out because I don't know if I'm allowed to show it. I'm assuming that I am. Um, but up here underneath my blur, there's a code uh, that I can use on this website to go watch the premiere online. So after it appears at Yamicon, it's going to be available online for the attendees who weren't able to watch it using the code up here. Again, it's probably okay to show the code, but I don't want to just in case. Uh, but again, I will leave a thing up here for what I thought about it. Maybe you'll throw a clip in here as well. All right, I, I have to be completely honest with you. I just totally forgot about this after I filmed this video, and we still have not watched the movie. I'm just going to assume that it's good. All right, it's time. Let's get back to some Pokemon. I told you about two packs. This is the other Japanese. Well, I bought two Japanese packs anyways. Yep, that's, uh, that's Korean again. You really need to learn your languages. You're basically being racist at this point. This is the second Japanese pack that I purchased. We're gonna open this thing up in hope to get a good pull. Um, just like, you know, last, again, not last year, but last convention, uh, COVID ruining things. So I'm not gonna do one to the front. Clearly that's not how you do this, but we have the rainy form cast form. Uh, I got the sunny in the last one, didn't I? Uh, we have Inke, uh, uh, Ladybug, there should be one more before the good card. Uh, Malamar, yeah, these are all five cards. So one more, one more shot. Yeah, I do not know who you are. But yeah, okay. You can't, you can't win everyone, right? But I'd say, you know, it's at least cool. I don't do the Japanese cards very often. It's just a nice thing to have. Also, can I just say, most of the Japanese cards I see have white borders around them, along with the ones that I own. So the fact that these are yellow, that's weird to me, right? That's weird, right? Maybe I'm just wrong. I don't, like I said, I don't have Japanese cards. I don't have many. Speaking of card games, uh, we also have a bunch of pins, specifically from Yu-Gi-Oh. This vendor was selling Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon pins, but honestly, the Yu-Gi-Oh are the ones to go with, because like we have a lot of Pokemon pins. They're not that hard to get your hands on. Yu-Gi-Oh, I have I don't think I own a single one. So we actually have Yugi himself right here. We have my Valentine right here, if I can get the light on it a little bit. It's kind of hard to do, but another really cool pin. These all have these like rose gold backs to them. Um, they're pretty heavy pins, to be honest with you. Uh, we have Kaiba right here, another great one to have. We have uh, Mirak from uh, the Elder Scrolls. Uh, Mir, I don't know how to say his name. And of course, the best one, we have Yami Yugi. Yeah, there was a deal, it was like five of them for like $20 or something, which to be fair is probably paying too much if I had to guess. But it's one of those things like, you know, you're here, if you want them, it's not the worst idea just to go ahead and do it. So, my lady friend actually bought this one for me, as my favorite animal is the pinguano. Um, so I actually have not opened this one yet. Uh, so we're gonna open her up and see what kind of pinguano I have. It's probably the exact same thing that's there on the front. Um, it do appear to be. Let's open it up, and also I would like to point out, if you're familiar with Pokemon collectibles, uh, Remint is the company that has a lot of Pokemon products. Um, this one is actually not Remint, this one is Bandai. But they still do the same tactic that Remint does of throwing a thing of gum in it. That way they can put this in the, in the candy aisle instead of the toy aisle in order to get more sales. But we have our pink one, his head's kind of off to the side. I'm happy. He is a hollow boy. He's, he's solid. Don't get me wrong. He's pretty solid, but he is hollow. You can, that hole goes straight up through his brain so we can see his insides. But cool little penguin. I'm happy with that. Let's see here. Along with that, uh, she got herself a little hamster. Uh, 
And of course this one was opened. We have our hamster. It's a pretty little boy, really well detailed. Like and the almond blends in a little bit. But like aside from that, I really like this thing. Like the fur and stuff looks really nice. Same material, it's also Bandai, but it's pretty cool. Uh, the last one I actually will not be opening. Uh, this is actually a gift for my grandmother. Um, but she, you know, grandmother, they like cats. Actually mine really does. Um, so these are like sushi cats, they're kind of cool. So she actually got two more of these. Now these are a little bit different. This one is another Pokemon one. However, the other one is an anime grab box. I wasn't too big on these because as somebody who does enjoy anime, I'm not gonna like everyone out there and these general catch-all things don't tend to work out. It's like the loot crate anime crate. There's no point in subscribing for that because there's no way you've seen every anime that they're going to be featuring as in random products in there. But, it came with another one of these. It's a little weird. I mean, Pokemon's technically an anime, but most of these boxes were Pokemon ones. You'd think that they would just save these for the Pokemon. But we have Hack mo -O. I do believe that is that one's name. I'm bad with the mo -O line. And on the other end, we have a Brushix. Again, these are like the really cool kind of popping out magnets. I freaking love these things. Uh, it also came with some other things. Um... We have a pin one, ironically, from Hello Kitty, apparently. We have a Naruto pin, which I am a fan. It's like a Funko one, actually, it looks like. But, you know, it's it's okay. But then it came with this complete cringe. Like, full-on, Nani, I paused my anime for this. Uh, otaku for life. And I heart Japanese symbol in anime. Like, yeah, I mean, it's... If, if you want that to be your personality, sure, but the But this next one, the other Pokemon one that she got, uh, there was something in here and she didn't want to spoil it for me. The second she saw it, she closed the box back up and said, I'm not showing you. So it did come with another one of these Ultra Beasts, this one being the Zerk Tree. Um, and it came with a coin, an actual TCG coin of, focus on it, please, Empoleon. Yeah, it's kind of beat up. The hollow effect is kind of faded. But I want to see what she saw. I want to see... Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much what I had um, with the Pichu. So we actually got two of these. That's pretty sick. So we have a little Funko uh, figure of Cubone. That is actually awesome. I'm happy that we have two of these. We might even have more. Like I said, I have more stuff to go through. There's a chance we'll get more of these. That is sick. I can't blame her for wanting to save that. The Pichu just kind of ruined it a little bit for us. But that is way too cool. And these were actually on sale there. Like, they were $5 for these things. So $5 for the mystery box, any extra things with it, even if it's like a coin and a sticker, it's still kind of cool. All right, so we are down to the last, I think, four things. Uh, technically five, I suppose. Uh, she also bought bulk cards, these ones being Dragon Ball Super. So we're gonna go through these pretty quickly. Um, but they were $5 each and she bought two things of them. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys do Dragon Ball Super, but they can be kind of expensive to collect for. Uh, they can be a little bit harder to find. And it's not a uh, phenomenon. I actually like that. It's not like a huge thing, you know, quite as big as Pokemon, you know, the biggest, you know, uh, entertainment media out there. They're basically a reverse there of one of the balls. Yeah, so there's not going to be anything super crazy in here. I have already seen these when she went through them. Um, but it's just, you know, it's cool. I think it's one of the leader back cards. Uh, I should probably keep my eye out for those. But it's just, it's just kind of neat. We got a couple hollows in here, some nice looking things. Um, and like, don't get me wrong, I am a fan of Dragon Ball. I especially love Dragon Ball Super. I thought it was amazing. Um, oops, uh, there's another leader back card right here. But it's one of those things where I collect so many card games, like adding Dragon Ball to my current main three, which are Pokemon, Digimon, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, I don't need to add more cards. So, I have opened Dragon Ball cards on this channel. They were all either purchased, uh, I, I'm pretty sure all of them I've done were purchased by me. Um, but they were all, they all went to her in the end. Like, they're, they're part of her collection. I don't have much to do with it. But then the other bulk bundle, and again, nothing super crazy in these. It's just some, you know, nice looking cards to add to the collection that can definitely use some growth. Don't get me wrong, she has a lot of, like, original Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z cards from back in the day. As far as Dragon Ball Super, like, the collection could definitely be bigger. So this is definitely a decent way to, well, 
literally bulk it up. Uh, just a bunch more. You got the Yamcha, Krillin, Mai, who I freaking loved in Super. Uh, we have Frieza biding his time. I think we've seen that one before. We have Age and Nimba here. Uh, Lizard. Uh, another Mai. So yeah, there are some duplicates. So you have Lord Slug right here as another leader back and as a hollow. Um, I think we have another hollow coming up. Yes, we have the Majin Buu Ghastly Energy. Sorry I keep like, kind of drifting off camera. I'm trying not to do that. But I'm also trying to, you know, watch multiple things at once. And it's kind of hard to do. I actually do like how they, how they kind of like framed her in this image. It makes the card more interesting for just being Bulma. Uh, definitely nobody's favorite character, but a, a character nonetheless. So like I said, we're nearing the end. We have three more things to go, and we're going to be opening up another one of these still sealed grab boxes. This is the last one of these little ones. Um, hopefully we can get something interesting. I'm hoping for something good in here. And we are starting off with a Bulbasaur pin. Now I just want to get the Squirtle, because now we have the Charmander and the Bulbasaur. But, still happy, it's my boy. And, oh, okay, I thought it was a duplicate at first. We actually got another one of these. I was kind of hoping for the magnets, because they're cool. I know I'm weird, I'm hoping for a magnet over a, you know, Funko figure. But, at first I thought it was another Pichu. No, that is a Pikachu. So we have uh, two of the three steps of the evolution line. That is a nice pairing right there. I was so afraid it was a duplicate. That makes me happy. And that does appear to be it. No stickers in that one. So with two more things left, I'll go ahead and spoil it now. The last one, just a regular card pack. I just like ending my videos off that way. Uh, we have the $25 Pokemon grab box. This one is unopened. The game box that I did earlier, I wanted to open it because you know I didn't know if it'd be worth going back for anything. And I enjoyed it. So I figured the Pokemon one definitely can't hurt, right? We're gonna hope, I'm gonna be grabbing blindly out of the box. I am doing my best not to look inside or to feel around. I'm just going to grab in the first thing. Okay. Again, I am not the biggest on plot. What? Is It's a bag. Well, that's kind of cool. His back opens up. We have a Charmander bag that can hold like a quarter and it would pretty much fill it up. There's like no space in there. But Charmander plush, I'm not going to use it like a bag. Uh, Pokemon with really weird coloring on it. Who the hell makes this one? Made in China. Well, it has Nintendo and Pokemon copyrights on it, so it must be an official thing. I don't see who actually made it, though. Um, but cool, we have a Charmander plush. Again, not the biggest on plush, but if it had to be from a franchise, that'd probably be it. Next up, we... Okay! I felt a ball, so I assumed. We have another one of these. This means we have another shot at getting uh, our Bulbasaur uh, instead of another Mew. Don't get me wrong, the Mew is cool, but we all, like I said earlier, we all know Bulbasaur is objectively the best one that we could possibly get, and we got an Eevee. Focus on it. Focus, camera. Yep, there it be. It's just the... It's just an Eevee suction cup, little boy. Like I said, I did some of these a long time ago. I don't even remember which ones I got, but I don't remember getting a Mew. So maybe I didn't get an Eevee either. I'm, like I said, I'm assuming it's from like an older series. But our Mew little suction cup, we'll stick it right there and the not cover up Cubone. We'll throw him there. Next up, we have, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, cool, we got another chance for something good. I'm telling you, I like these things. I want to look into them more. I want to get a collection going and then forget that I even owned them for many years. We have a Metagross. Uh, I thought he was popping out here. He's not, it's this flat there. Just kind of a little bit of an illusion there, but not terrible. But the second one, we have Breen. I don't know how to say it. It was like Broeen or something weird. I don't know, not a favorite of mine, but still nice to have. I especially like that Metagross. That is definitely the better one. I'm just, I'm happy. Even though I didn't get it from one of the small boxes, I managed to get another one of these. I am happy now. I can, I can continue with uh, living. So the next thing, really? We got another, and this I think is the first one that didn't have Squirtle on the front. I'm pretty sure. 
Okay. The $25 box is coming in strong, man. So let's see. We have, okay, there we go. Type null. That is sick. Oh, I'm just so happy. This feels like something they would have done a long time ago. This does not feel like a modern thing. This feels like something they would have done like in the 2000s, like early 2000s and just stopped. I'm so happy to see modern Pokemon with this. And uh, Marshadow. God, I, this is just sick. I need to, I, I can put this on my fridge, but I almost want like, yeah, it's probably the best place for it. I almost get something I can just like display these on like a metal Pokemon thing. That's just cool, man. I'm really happy with that Marshadow. Especially because he's like mid attack, so his eyes turn red and the like, green crap. I love that. Why is that my obsession right now is just magnets? Like what the fuck happened to me? Like I, I used to have, I used to have standards, right? I used, I, I used to, like value things that had value. Now I'm just valuing magnets. Uh, let's see here. Okay, we have a more Pico, more Peco coin. This one being his dark form. Uh, why does I say coin? Pin. It, it is a pin, and it is official one for the Pokemon Company. I'm pretty sure that that uh, vendor had like a big thing about how they only sell official merchandise. Uh, this might be the last thing. We have another sticker pack. I mean, cool. A bunch of Pikachus down there at the bottom, some starters, Sylveon, Mewtwo's again, Greninja, okay, not a bad inclusion, a bunch of Finnegan, I mean, I just, I'm not gonna use them, they're just gonna sit in my, my, like, I have like a stack of, like, paper that's basically just, like, inserts from Elite Trainer boxes and stuff like that, and, like, uh, these, like, old books and stuff from Pokemon, these are just gonna be added to that pile, basically. And yes, that is it for the box. I gotta say, it wasn't a bad box. I mean, you got the stickers, which, eh. We got four of our magnets right here. We got the pin. We got the big Charmander plush, who I just realized isn't really in frame at all. It's cool. Also kind of surprised not to see any card packs in there. Kind of surprising, but I actually don't mind. I kind of like getting things that aren't just, here's two card packs. But yes, this is the last thing for the day. I just wanted to end off with something more normal, because, you know, got, uh, also I paid $5 for it, or <laughs> a chilling rain pack. This is something a bit more normal to end off the video, right? Maybe we'll get some luck out of it. You know, I'm mostly a Pokemon channel, it's most of this content. Also, I gotta say, the video's coming up. I have a lot of stuff planned. It is pretty much just Pokemon. Like, I have things set up for, like, probably a bit over the next month, I think, me doing two videos a week. So, if if you're only for this on this channel for Pokemon, you're gonna be happy. I think we have one Yu-Gi-Oh! thing, and then I think... No, I have one other thing. So, I think I have two non-Pokemon things in the next long while. So, I hope that makes somebody out there happy. But, we pull our code card. There's your code. We do three to the front, and we get rid of our energy. And, Cybold, hey, there's the dude's name in English. Uh, we have Melanie and Brawly, three trainers as the uncommons. Uh, then we go on to the Bun Suite, the Cub Fu Inke, our Diglett Boy, Score Bunny, Doug Trio as a reverse, rather fitting. But on the very end, let's... Try to end this video off strong, because I'm not doing another pack. I'm saying it now. This video is long enough. I spent enough money on this crap. Like, we're not going to do anything else at the end. This is our chance. We have a Gallade. All right. Well, this video was officially a failure. Please downvote it into hell. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Disliking videos doesn't matter anymore. Also, I said downvote. I'm not a Redditor, I promise. But, yeah, just uh, dislike this video into oblivion. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Only I can see the fact that uh, you guys hate my content. Can I just say getting rid of the dislike button? I'm sure everybody else agrees, but it sucks. Uh, they said it was supposed to help small creators. I'm a small creator, and I hate it. I am totally against it. If someone doesn't like my videos, I am perfectly okay with them saying that publicly with the dislike because it helps me grow and it gets me more cautious with the things that I post because I know not only am I going to see that feedback but so is everybody else and they're going to see like hey you know this video might not be the best and it might not be like you know I'm going to produce bad content everybody does the dislike button is helpful to me as a creator and it also helps for it to be public I mean if you're doing tutorials which I've had to do 
I've had to watch tutorials since the dislike button has been gone, and it sucks trying to know if they're trying to scam me or not. And YouTube is like, oh, well, you can go report it. Like, yeah, I can report it after they've already screwed me. Sorry, I know that was a rant. Uh, but yeah, I literally just got home. Like, this isn't a joke. I, I The Yamakon was today. Technically, there's one day left. I could go tomorrow. But we kind of got what we wanted. I know that the third day of a con, usually a lot of things start going on sale. But I'm, I'm good. I have spent way too much money as is. Um... I'm, I'm happy with what I have. So, and there's also like nothing else I'm really interested in. They had like the, the cosplay thing today, the cosplay contest. It was pretty cool. There were some odd ones in there, I won't lie. But I'm also not going to publicly shame or judge people. Uh, it was cool overall. I really did like it. Um, so yeah, if you're ever out in Tennessee around December, go check out Yamacon. It was fun. This is my second year going. It's also the second con I've ever been to. I've only ever done Yamacon and I've done it twice now. It is worth your time. But anyways, I believe that is it. Uh, if I forgot anything, I'll add it on here at the end, but I really don't think I did. It's just a thing in the back of my mind saying I forgot something. So, if you enjoyed this video, it was a long one and I hope a fun one. Give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel. You could give it a dislike. It doesn't matter. So maybe just give it a like instead. That way it actually does something. And if you already subscribed to the channel, then thank you for being subscribed. Hopefully, I will see all of you next time. With an Elite Trainer Box, goodbye. Hey, uh, yeah, this is uh, kind of awkward. Um, yeah, so somebody stole... It's a little hard for me to say. Somebody stole my... My sweet roll, okay? Somebody stole my sweet roll. Is that what you wanted to hear? Like, do I have to actually say it out loud? Do, do you need this?